the first thing we're going to talk about are the things you need to become a TV presenter. So we're going to look at some of the performance techniques, how to actually come across effectively on the screen. What we find is so many people, when they're talking to the screen, they just lose that personality and they, they stop being themselves and they start just talking like that and it becomes very bland to listen to and monotone and no expression. It's like, where's that person gone? So we're going to talk a little bit about how to really effectively communicate through that lens. Then we're going to be looking at the tools of the trade. Now, what I mean by that are the things that a presenter has to use. So it might be the auto cue. It could be talkback, little earpiece that you get instructions. It could be the interviewing techniques. All those different things, co-presenting, that are really the uh, the bread and butter of, of what we use to do our job. And it's like any job, It's I, I often say, it's like if a plumber came to your house and said, um, uh, what's this spanner for again? You'd go, oh my goodness, what this, this person hasn't got a clue. So why do we expect as a presenter or a performer to turn up to a TV studio and do the same thing. I've never used an auto cue before, or I've never used talk back, or I don't know how to interview properly. So those are the things that, as a professional presenter, we need to know. Then, and this is like a new bit, this has only happened over the last five, uh, especially over lockdown, um, the self-shooting side of things. A professional presenter, absolutely, these days, has to be able to shoot at home, to film themselves, so whether that be showreels, self-tape auditions, self-casting, they want you to send a video of you reading the lines or doing a bit to camera. And if you do it properly, you can really increase your chances of, of getting those gigs. And we'll talk a little bit about that and show you some of the things to look out for as well. And then finally, the last bit, part four, would be the career strategy. So you've got your showreel, you've got your CVs, you've got everything you need, you're talented, you know how to communicate through the lens, then where are you gonna find work? How do you go about it? And the great news is, that there's loads of work. There really, really is. This is what I did this morning. Uh, literally, I went online this morning, just before we started, I went on LinkedIn, and this is amazing. Look, LinkedIn, um, where, where did I see this? There's about 2,619 results for presenter. Now, a lot of those are old, but that's just on LinkedIn. So TikTok presenter, radio presenter, Chelsea fan, any, any footballers here? There's a job there waiting to be filled. And look, these are, this is like four days ago, 16 hours ago. Um, radio jobs today, these are all up today. Then presenter promotions, these are all within the last week. So when I hear presenters and people say, oh, there's nothing out there, I'm sorry, I simply don't believe it. Um, and I can show you not only how to, where to find this sort of stuff, but also doing above and beyond, doing more than just waiting for something to pop up on um, uh, presenter promotions or Star Now or something like that. You can be actually uh, just putting all your material together, <clears throat> designing it correctly, and sending it to the right people. So let's get on with the good stuff, shall we? The first thing that I mentioned was the performance. You have to be able to communicate effectively with the lens. Now, I always like to start with a very old, it, it, say, what is it? A study done by a professor, Professor Albert Merhrabian, back in the 60s. Now, he did a lot of studies, and this particular one has been misquoted and misunderstood and um, uh, 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 all, all the time. But what he was actually saying is when you're communicating to another person, I'm not necessarily talking about the lens now, but I'm talking about communicating with another person, that 7% that of that communication in the form of what you mean by what you're saying, the feeling, the emotional underlying sentiment of those words comes across is 7% carried by the words you say. 38% uh, is carried by the tonality and 55% by the visuals. What are you looking at? So let's just investigate that for a minute because what that means is I could say to you something like, hi guys, it's really good to have you here today. Thanks for coming. And it might look like um, I, I'm sincere. There's a bit of sincerity there. Or I could say, hi guys, it's really great to have you here today. Thanks for coming. And that's exactly the same words, but it's a very different feeling. It's a very different meaning to what I'm saying. So before we try and 
communicate to somebody through the lens. We've got to know what we mean. So preparation is really important. But we've also got to be brave enough to let people see what we mean. Sometimes people get a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous in front of the lens. And so what they do is they just close down a bit. They just, just hide behind this formal person that they become and they start talking in that sort of way. And as they talk, it becomes less and less interesting to listen to because there's nothing to watch. There's no, there's no feeling. There's no meaning. If you're not making somebody feel something, you're not doing your job as a communicator. So being open enough and being aware of those different elements of communication is really, really important. And that comes on to to, to the fact that you have to be brave enough to be yourself. You have to be brave enough to let people in and see who and what and how you are. And I always say this because I think it's it, it, it goes, and you should be brave enough and confident enough to do that if you're not what I call an ist. So if you're sexist, racist, homophobic, if you just dislike or hate somebody for something they have no control over, then that's pretty ugly. So hide that and really go and do a different job. It's, But if that's not you, and I'm sure it's not, then what are you afraid of? What are you hiding? There's nothing to hide. You're entitled to your opinions. So you might think that we should be Brexit in or Brexit out. That's fine. That just comes from what you've heard, what you've seen, what people have told you, how you've interpreted, interpreted, how you've understood the news or whatever it is you're watching. Um, that's that that's your opinion and you're entitled to your opinion and in fact that is what makes you really interesting so so don't hide away you should have all the confidence in the world to be you because ultimately that is what is going to make you very successful not being a copy of somebody else but being an original you that's what the industry is missing we don't need a bad copy of uh, Lorraine or, or any other presenter, we need an original you. And that confidence to do that comes with practice, comes with knowing what you're doing, understanding what it is you're doing with the camera lens, knowing that it's coming across okay, knowing that your talk back isn't gonna put you off or you know how to deliver auto cue. Just takes a bit of practice to get all that right. But once you do it, you're free and it's uh, really quite liberating. So the practice is important. So um, when, you, when you can be yourself, you do need to consider just lifting that energy just a little bit. Lifting the energy that you might have when you're normally being 100% you. If I was talking to somebody in a coffee shop, I probably wouldn't be quite as animated as I am now. But for the camera, it kind of just sucks up. It absorbs a lot of that energy. So you need to subtly em emphasize. You know, energy is perhaps not the, the right word, but it's close. It's, it's almost to subtly emphasize your expressions. In a natural way, just, just give them a little kick. Rather than, I could have just said that by saying, in a natural way, just give them a little kick. And that might be how I would say it if I was sat at a coffee table talking to somebody. But on the camera, I'm really trying to explain it because I know that the camera sucks out a lot of the visuals. It sucks out that intimacy that you have when you're sat in front of somebody. So it needs to be replaced. And that is by subtly highlighting expressions and emphasis and looks. And uh, if, if, if you've got a quizzical look, make sure I can see it. You know, I want all of that. It's, it makes for good, interesting communication on the lens. And that's what we need to be if, if that's what we're going to do, if we're going to be a professional presenter. So energy or, or just subtly lift those expressions to allow people uh, watching on a screen to really get what you mean. What are you trying to convey there? Um, the next thing that works really nicely on the lens there, I'm going to have to get a move on because it's 25 past already. So I'm going to start speeding up a bit and just touching on some of these points. Charm and charisma, great thing um, for a 
communicator to have. A charming, charismatic person draws us in. We feel comfortable listening to them. We feel safe. And it's very important that your audience do feel safe um, unless you're doing some sort of character presenter where, or comedy or satire or something. But on a day-to-day, -day, sort of this morning, light entertainment, uh, normal presenting, your audience have to feel comfortable. We empathise with each other. And if I feel awkward and uncertain and I'm um, a little bit unsure of what I'm doing and you can almost immediately see it, hear it in my voice and my eyes and my body language has gone different. My voice is on the edge now because I'm a bit... Then, then your audience is going, oh, this is awkward. This is just hard work listening. And you can't have that. You've got to make them feel comfortable. So, so being able to... to uh, to have that confidence is is really important. Confidence in yourself there. Um, the that charm and charisma. Sorry, um, uh, it is confidence in yourself. It's confidence in you just being you, not worrying about oh, am I doing this right? You should have practiced and know you're doing it right at that stage that you're on the TV or whatever. Um, but the other thing with charm and charisma is we've got to make sure that we're in no way trying to make anybody like us. We're not trying too hard to impress anybody. If we do that, the audience starts to go, That's, why, why are you trying to big yourself up? Why do you feel the need to do that? Why are you trying too hard? It's desperate, and desperate isn't good on camera, in communication, anywhere. So, so don't try too hard, just do it your way. And then you get the right people following you. The right people go, oh, I really like watching him or her or whoever because they, they, I just get them. I get that genuine them. And that's what you must do. You must have that confidence in doing it your way. You will get the haters. Everybody gets the haters. Believe it or not, I get the haters. I know, go figure. I can't believe it. Um, but so what? You know, I talk to thousands and thousands of people a year and if I get 10 people who don't like me, that's pretty good going, I think. It's always, it's always the, the people who really don't like you who talk the loudest as well. So that just get used to it. It comes, you know, anybody who's got any social media up, you already know this. It's, uh, it comes part of, the, uh, part of the job, you know, take the good with the bad. Um, OK, let's move on. So movement's important. Now, this is like the technical side of talking to a camera. What happens is the, the biggest question I ever get is what do I do with my hands? Um, well, it's a funny question because you never ask that normally. I've never walked down the street, bumped into somebody I know and gone, hello, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks, but I don't know what to do with my hands. It doesn't happen. So why does it happen in front of the camera? Well, what happens is when we use our hands like I am now, I'm using my hands to gesticulate, to, to actually help develop, to formulate the words I'm saying. It kind of helps me develop the sentence sometimes or, or think of a word. And people are used to watching other people do that. And it, and it helps to show. You, you have uh, illustrators where you show that something is really big or something's really small or two. These are illustrators. So there's all sorts of different hand movements. But one of the main ones is we use it to help ourselves formulate the words and the sentences. Now, of course, if I've got an auto cue script in front of me, or I've learned very well a script, or even if I know my key notes really, really well, there's not so much need to formulate those words. So you stop using your hands. And then you feel awkward. So you start wobbling. You start going from one, you, you know, if you're standing up, you're shifting weight or rocking up and down or fiddling with your hands like this. And all of that just looks weird. It just looks, it makes you look a little bit uneasy and it just doesn't look right. So it's about making sure you get used to using your hands even when you don't need to. And there are ways to do that. Let's move on to the eyes. Eyes on the lens, as you already know, unless the audience um, can see what you're looking at or they know what you're looking at. So we can take our eyes off the lens all the time. And in fact, I've been doing it here quite a lot. If I was on television, I wouldn't be doing the same as I would on this sort of webinar or this meeting online because you guys know that when I'm going like that, I'm just looking at all your lovely faces. I can see you all. There you go, look at that. Kane, I can see you up there. And Lauren, and there's Vanessa, hello. <laughs> Cheeky. 
So you know really on these webinars these days that that's what I'm doing. I'm just looking at my notes, or I'm looking at you guys on the screen there. But on television, we're not used to that. And if I take my eyes off because I'm looking at the floor manager, or I'm looking, something's distracting me, the audience are kind of going, what, what, what do you keep looking at? I, I'm feeling left out a bit. So eyes on that lens, unless they can see it. So if I pick up a prop and uh, I'll just have a little bit of that. Oh. Don't mind if I do. Look, that's my Star Wars cup. Can you see that? Stormtrooper cup. How many people have got that? Yeah, Kane, look at that. You're jealous, aren't you? Yeah, that's my Stormtrooper cup. Um, so that's fine. I can take my eyes off the lens if the audience can see what I'm looking at. Or I can even... Um, say uh, a little bit later on we're going to go over and uh, talk to uh, John over there and I kind of told you what I'm looking at so it's not like you've got to keep your eyes on the lens all the time but um, make sure that you, you keep the audience involved in what's going on they know what's going on let's go on to the next thing there's up on three there that's to do with the countdown I'm going to have to really speed up because I've got too much here to tell you um, the countdown uh, goes five four that's your cue to start in a TV studio. Now, what happens is if the presenter is looking at the floor manager doing that and going three, two, one. Hello, welcome to today's show. We can often catch that transition and those eyes just suddenly, you know, that you on a good day coming into life all of a sudden. And it's, it just looks a bit amateur. So up on three means you keep your eyes on the lens on three, the silent count, and then you are in the zone you're that you on the good day with that little bit of energy little bit of warmth in the face and it's like this hello welcome to today's show we've got blah 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 so there's no transition there for the audience to see it's the same on the other side don't suddenly stop what you're doing when you finished your script so that's it from us we'll see you at the same time tomorrow was that all right did i do all right that because again it's a nightmare for editors if it's pre-record on live we might catch it so be careful of those things um when you're talking to the lens, talk to a friend in your mind's eye. Talk to one person because you, you are. If you think about it, you are talking to one person, especially if you're doing online stuff. We sit with our phones these days, even people at home. If you've got a big family, five of you, probably maximum, uh, you're talking to. So talk to them. Try to avoid, ladies and gentlemen, everybody at home, you lot watching. It's not a golden rule, but uh, and sometimes people as part of their brand of how they are, will say, guys, and that's okay. You know, once in a while it's fine, but if you're presenting in your, in your head to 150 people or 1,000 people or 10,000 people, then it becomes a presentation rather than you just chatting to one person. And that's ultimately what we're really trying to do. We're trying to just talk to that one person and explain whatever it is we're trying to explain. So in your mind's eye... Um, you create that model and, and I'll go into great detail in all of that um, in some of the modules on that course there. Let's move on to mistakes. Mistakes aren't mistakes until you make the mistakes. So if you say sorry, if you look awkward, um, then yeah, that's a mistake and the, the audience can see it. But if you fumble a word or you do something even worse, you say the wrong thing or you trip up or whatever, if you just laugh it off, nobody cares. They really don't. So if you get, I put my teeth back in and try that again, no one cares, as long as you're not doing it every sentence. So um, when you go wrong, when you go astray, be honest. Honesty is the best policy. If you forget what you're saying, just go, do you know what? I've lost my train of thought there. I'm going, oh, that was it. That's what I'm doing. Or have a look at your note. Do you know what? I've lost my train of thought there. What was it I was talking about? Oh, yes, that was it. Uh, no one cares. They, they understand that you're a human being. So, you know, be honest with them. But if you make a mistake and you lose your train of thought and you go, um, and actually what, what, um, what the next point that I wanted to make was, and you start trying to have a sneaky look, if people are going, what are you doing? I can see that you're trying to have a sneaky look and it looks dreadful. So be honest. Be honest with... Um, with what's happening as much as possible. Sometimes you can't, I mean, if, if, if it's for legal reasons and all the rest of it. But, uh, uh, but again, uh, cock up with confidence, that's what I say. So let's have a look at what is next then. Moving on to the tools of the trade. So working to time, this is when you have your earpiece in, that it goes with talkback, hand in hand with talkback actually. 
it, it's an earpiece that the gallery will be talking to you. They'll give you time counts, suggestions of what you might ask sometimes. They might correct you if you've said something that isn't quite right or just let you know what the next item is coming up on the show. And uh, at the end of the show, towards the ad breaks, at the beginning of the show, they will give you a time count on the studio floor, but also in your ear in that little earpiece, that talk back. And they'll be going, okay, we're going to the ad break in five, four, three, two, one, cut and clear in the studio, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is happening while you are finishing off whatever it is you're saying on the auto cue or the interview or whatever. So the idea is you don't let that distract you. It takes a bit of practice, but uh, I can show you how to do that with a mobile phone and an earpiece. Um, so uh, that's talkback, auto cue, that's the teleprompter. You've got those lines. The idea there is to bring it off the page. If you're reading the words as they come across and your head is moving as the lines go like that, it looks like you're reading because you are. So you've got to use the punctuation to emphasise words, all that, those... Um, those little subtle increases that we talked about earlier with your energy and the expressions and emphasis, you really need to be aware of those and you can use the punctuation to actually remind you to do something. A pause and then a change of thought, a change of uh, uh, how you're thinking about something, a feel, all of that brings, you know, you paint the picture in somebody's head when you're explaining and reading uh, the auto cue like that. Again, there are exercises for you to uh, really, really get good at that. Uh, handling props, that's pretty it's straightforward. It's really getting used to holding it still. And I don't know, there's my glass again. I can see uh, Kane's getting excited. Um, am I, uh, I'm holding it very still and for a longer time than perhaps I would. What happens for a new presenter, if they've got a book or a glow, whatever they go there. So there it is. That's the... Um, there's the Stormtrooper glass, as you can see, it's got a lovely little logo there. The audience can't see anything, so you have to be ultra aware of the camera. So I can't really see that, but I know you can. And I'll be using my monitor to make sure I'm pointing in the right place, okay? So using props, there's a whole, um, a whole load of stuff that you can do to get the best out of that. Um, it's just being aware that it's for the audience and not for you. Interviewing techniques, really important because if you think about when you're watching the news, whether you're watching light entertainment, whether you're watching stuff on YouTube, um, it could be a music show where they're talking to a boy band, it's on radio, we're always talking to our guests and in interviewing. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, that's 50% of your job. So it's an enormous part of a professional presenter's job. You need to be listening, you need to be... Um, taking what they've said and being aware of of where to take it what's entertaining about what they've said how can I make this intriguing surprising funny perhaps or just really interesting and just being queued up and prepared to get all the best elements out of those things knowing when somebody is avoiding the question this is on news type um uh, programs, the politicians or CEOs, business people, they'll just avoid the questions by using what's called the ABC technique, um, which is they acknowledge the question, they bridge it with a phrase like, um, uh, before I answer that though, it's important for us to understand, and then they see, continue on their own agenda. I'll show you how to avoid that. Um, uh, there's, there's, you know, it's about being confident in yourself and having control. So controlling interviews is a is a huge part of the job. So interviewing, that's that's really important to know. Script writing, well, depending on what you're doing, you will or you won't have to do that. But all of us, when we first start off, we need to think about putting together promotional material. We're coming on to that in a moment. So we need to write some scripts, have some ideas to film myself in front of, and it doesn't matter if it's an iPhone, you can do some really good footage if you've got a few little pieces of equipment. You can use your iPhone to film promotional stuff that you can use YouTube, make a show reel out of, or a promo reel. Um, but you need to be able to write the scripts. And uh, again, there's a technique and it's about forward selling a lot of the time. So when we start a show, what do they always do at the beginning of, say, this morning? They'll say something like, hello, uh, welcome to the show with uh, me, Phil and Holly coming up on today's show. And then they start 
telling you about it, aren't they? Coming up, we've got Gordon Ramsay here. He's going to show us how to make the perfect sausage casserole that's really going to um, get the party started. I don't know what I'm talking about. But they, they forward sell the items on the show. They don't just go. Coming up on today's show, Gordon Ramsay's here. And then we're going to be talking about some books. And then we've got a competition. Don't go anywhere. That, that, that doesn't sell it to me. I just said, that, that sounds awful. I don't think I'll bother. So the script writing when it comes to forward selling, and it's not just TV, it's your YouTube. Um, it's really important. I've put a brand new section on the course on YouTube. I've written an ebook, and and I've gone through all of the things to forward sell, to get subscribers. We're coming on to that, but it's so, so important to be able to, to write for yourself. Handheld mic techniques and location, only relevant if you are doing that sort of TV. So I'm going to skim on because time is squizzing past. I've just made up a word, squizzing. <laughs> um, Self-shooting. OK, let's have a quick look at, um, at some of that because that really is. So making the content. Well, I've already been touching on, on why you need to make your own content. Um, you need to get yourself out there and um, and have some sort of presence so that people can find you. As I said before, um, just sending a, an email, a letter or something and going, oh, well, I hope, hope somebody discovers me isn't going to cut the mustard anymore. So you need to have a presence where people can go, oh, th this person is an expert on this, that or the other. This person seems to be interesting in when it comes to UFOs or when it comes to stormtroopers um, or whatever that might be. Um, you need to have your brand. So making your own content is important and YouTube and social media is important as well. I always think YouTube, I'm a bit old old school perhaps, but YouTube just gives me everything I need. I can do, put how long the videos are. Um, I can make the adult if I want to. I can make it for kids if I want to. The, I can do, do whatever I want on YouTube. There are other successful um, presenters using things like social media on uh, TikTok, very, very popular these days, um, uh, Instagram and all of those things. So if you've already got a following on them, yes, yeah, stick to it and use it. You obviously know what you're doing. But for me, if you're starting off, I would always go YouTube. I think it's um, it's just a great way to, uh, to, to get some exposure out there. Um, the backgrounds. Now, I'm using um, a, a background, as you can see. Just make sure that you haven't got something lighter behind you. A lot of time, people sit in front of a window. Um, and I'm, not, I'm going to pick on Andy, and I know he won't mind, and it's fine, because Andy isn't talking. He's just listening, hopefully. But, um, oh, he's adjusting it now, so he doesn't... But if you look at Andy, uh, Galaxy S20 there, um, he's got the window behind him, and that's the lovely Turkish sunshine coming through the window. But we can't see Andy's lovely face. And that's a disaster. So it's little things like that when you're filming that you just... Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, he's still got it. Never lost it. Um, <laughs> and what, um, what you need to be aware of is, is behind you should be quite sparse, really. We don't want anything distracting behind you. If you've got a bookshelf, that should be OK. Um, but don't have bits of cups and... Uh, the old newspaper and some keys and I can see some plug sockets and a, 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 a coffee cup and all that. It's just it just gets in the way. So I would try and have a very clear background, if possible, that isn't lighter than you. The camera will expose to try and uh, find a balance between the, those two different light sources. And it, as I said, it will put you in shadow. So um, look out for your backgrounds and your uh, and what it is behind their clothes. The only thing really you've got to be careful of if you're using green screen, not to use or wear anything green, and don't have too many stripy type stripes. You get that zebra pattern that shimmers every time you move. You might have seen that before when people have very tight stripes on a uh, on a shirt or whatever that might be. Um, I just think plain colours are usually, but um, sometimes just pretty. Um, you know, not too fussy patterns are fine as well. Pastel colours, all good. All good. Um, so think about your clothing. There's lots more to think about, but that, that's the basics. Framing, we've spoke... Oh, framing, yeah, just sometimes if you're, if you're filming at home, try to avoid... You know, you've probably seen on, on BBC News or any news channel, when they go and there's somebody's doing a, um, an interview from home, they're right bang in the middle and they're like that. 
And it's sort of there's a head in the middle of the screen or they're looking down or they're looking up at you or all these different things. Try to get as much, I know it's difficult when it's on a laptop or something, but if it's a phone, try to um, have at least sort of a little bit of hand movement in there. As we've already said, that's really good for for communication, for people to see that. But there's also something called the rule of thirds, where you can just be, uh, your eyes should be two thirds of the way up and just a little bit off center. That leaves all this space for any interesting graphics or or anything else that you might want to show on your videos if, if that's what you're doing. But just plonking your head in the middle of the screen like that is just not particularly creative. And it's not really how um, most of the time we film certainly not in a TV studio, unless there's a reason for it. Sometimes there is. All of these rules are always broken. But when you're filming, um, keep it simple and, and let's have more of you than the room behind you. Um, using um, your iPhone is fine. If you are going to invest in a camera, make sure it's got a, uh, a, a microphone socket because you need your microphone nice and close to you. If you've got an iPhone and you're using that, the, the cameras on them these days are 4K, 8K, they're great quality. <clears throat> but the mics aren't great, especially when they're 10 feet away. It sounds tinny and the, the, the sound is so, so important. So get a microphone nice and close. Um, you can get, <coughs> excuse me, you can get um, lead mics from your phone. Um, again, you can just find all that information on our website. Um, and you can just buy them on Amazon. It just the, the quality of the sound is so important when it comes to your, your the look and the quality and the professionalism of your videos. So if you're going to invest, invest in a microphone and invest in a tripod. It will save you loads of time just to put your phone on or your camera. You can put it exactly, angle it exactly where you want to go rather than piling it on a load of books or trying to put it on the the shelf or something and hoping it's in the right position it just makes it a faff and we've all done it let's be honest but for the sake of 15 quid for a little phone for your uh for a little tripod for your phone you know it might be worth that investment the other thing is uh with those mics as well if, as we can see down there the soundproofing that's important try to avoid rooms that are just solid walls and no carpets because sound bounces around and echoes and sounds bad as well. So lots of furnishings, carpeted floor, big curtains, put up a duvet on the wall or over if you know over the sofa or over some chairs. It absorbs all the sound and it um it just makes for a, a clearer, deeper, richer sound when it comes to your videos and it looks professional as I said so again there's there's other products you can buy for that and lighting three-point lighting is the basic a um, couple of lights in front of you one behind to backlight you um, again it's all on the website if you want it I am moving on because time is moving on that's self-shooting let's go on to um, getting some work then well this is the important bit isn't it this is where um, we've got all of that we've got our brand so we've got um, you know we're into UFOs. It doesn't mean that's all I can talk about. But if anybody's looking for a UFO or a stormtrooper specialist, guess what? I'm the man. Um, but I can also do other stuff. So on my promo, I might have something a little bit, um, a little bit straighter, not always talking about that one subject. I don't want to be jumping around on my promo reel, <clears throat> which is actually the show reel, which is halfway down the list there. I don't want to be doing children's TV, then doing a news hard hitting political interview, then doing a bit of shopping TV. And just for fun, I might do a commentary on the, the tennis match because a producer will look at that and go, well, I don't know what this is. It, it seems to be a jack or Jill of all trades. It's not a, a specialist in anything. It's just all over the place. So try to keep your genre on your promo reels within uh, you know, to a bit closer within sort of not too, so that the presenters, agents, all those people can get a real feel for what you are. That's your brand. And the brand you have is so important. As we said before, being yourself and who you are is ultimately what is going to sell you. That's why you'll get the jobs. You're not saying I can't do any of these other things. But when a position comes up, maybe your gardener, when a position comes up for that, boom, you're right at the top of the list. As long as you've done all those other things properly, you're, you know, you've got a talent that is worth um, selling, but you've also got a specialist area that the 
the producer actually needs for a gardening show. So that's what you're looking to achieve to really go forward and be successful. Now there's loads of um, things like casting websites. I showed you some of them at the beginning. I mean, one of them was just LinkedIn. We had loads of presenter jobs, um, but there's things like presenter promotion, Star Now, Mandy, and the, there's loads of other um, types of uh, casting websites as well. Uh, Get one. Presenter Promotions is a good start, but uh, just get one. There's also Spotlight, which is the professional one, which agents want. So you'll find my details on Spotlight if you want them. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, that's what a professional TV production company will expect, I think. So you need to aim towards getting to Spotlight. Again, that's all covered. Um, so this whole thing is a presenter's toolkit, really. We've talked about showreel. CVs, um, you might, if you're starting out, not actually have a CV to start with. So you're looking at just having like a bio, a, a little rundown of, of what is brand you. So, you know, I, I'm a, an enthusiastic and fresh presenter who, who brings a, a twist when it comes to um, pruning roses and gardening. Um, because that sounds interesting, that sounds quite intriguing, rather than just, um, I'm a good timekeeper and um, a good team player and really enjoy uh, chatting with friends. It's kind of like, well, I kind of expect that, you know? Um, so try to always be thinking. So even if it is just a bio, um, think of your brand. What is it you're selling? And any salesperson will tell you, you can't sell anything unless you know it inside out. So understand product you as a presenter and then you can write about it. CV, that would just be a list of your credits should you have them. Okay, Produ uh, approaching producers. So everybody's got casting websites, everybody's on star now. We need to go above and beyond and we can do that by, uh, by actually approaching those producers, directors and people like that. Now this is what separates people. This is what separates the successful people from the people who are sat at home going, oh, there's no opportunities out there, I can never get anywhere. Um, it's you taking action and doing stuff. And that action is finding out, looking at the programs that you're interested in, you know, the gardening programs or whatever, the UFO, whatever it might be. At the end, they run titles, so you know who produces it, you know who directs it, send them your promo reels, send them your um, CVs and explain to them why you're writing to them specifically. Get a name, phone the company up or look at the name of the person on the, uh, on the credits at the end of the show and write to that person. And the chances are they're not gonna, they're not gonna reply. Okay, let's be honest, that's the game we're in. So what we do is we write back in a month's time and go, I've got an update for you. Since I last wrote to you, I've done this, that and the other. I've included it, <coughs> I've included this clip or this audio or this whatever, um, uh, and, uh, you know, I've included the rest of my stuff ag again. And you keep doing that until they ask you to stop. Uh, it, you, it's literally, it's those sort of people who have that gumption, that oomph, that, that narrow-minded, I'm going to get there. Those are the people that do get there. And, and, it, and it does, it's, it's very rarely that you're not talented enough. If you've done all those other things and you are competent and good in front of the camera, the only thing holding you back is you're waiting for somebody to discover you. You're waiting for the right casting to come up on Star Now. And, and that's a long way. I'll tell you that because I've done it when I was 20 and I ended up going back abroad and working abroad on the, on the, the holiday hotels. Don't do that to yourself. There's shortcuts here. There's, um, there's other ways. Now, there's a standing out is a really important thing as well. So if it's, if you can, I've got um, what I call video calling cards. Some of you I, I know um, uh, already know what they are, but they're little video brochures where you actually record your message, your covering letter um, to the camera, and then you play your, your show reel. And on these video brochures, when you open them, they immediately play automatically. So send a video brochure to a producer. That's going to stand you out. Did you hear about that kid who uh, approached Radio 1 and uh, painted his car with his CV? <laughs> he, got, he got the producer, he got noticed. He got a mention on the Radio 1 breakfast show because he parked up outside. Radio. So don't break the law, but break the rules. 
Be inventive. Think of something. Come on, you're creative people. You can do it. You've just got to be brave enough and, uh, and just start thinking cheeky. It's cheeky. That's all it is. Um, and that's, that's you. Think of people like, um, uh, I don't know, Alison Hammond from This Morning. She's cheeky. Isn't she? But she's great entertainment. You watch watch Alison on This Morning, and she's really entertaining. And I think mean, she does interviews with Harrison Ford, and there's them rolling about laughing because she's just brave and cheeky. So, you know, think of that if that's your style. But don't force it. But don't be afraid to use it if you can. Um, networking, online networking, actual networking. There's lists of these places um, on the website. Agents, again, approach them in the right way, similar way to you'd approach a, a producer um, and find an agent that's right for you. So if you're looking at the gardening show, find out who the presenters are, research them and who's their agent. Well, that's a pretty good contact, isn't it? So all these little tips can save you years of of wandering around and, and not, you know, failing at auditions and not getting things right. Um, if you just sort of put them all in a business plan, think of it as a business, plan it, um, get, your, get your filming right, get your promo stuff right. And then uh, before you do all that though, make sure you can present properly and that you know how to use all those tools of the trade. I've been in the industry for 30 years. I know I don't look old enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> started out as a presenter. I didn't have a clue. I really didn't. I started out on cruise ships and holiday hotels and then uh, worked my way into TV. My first job was on a show called County Focus. Um, and I bumbled around for years looking for jobs here, jobs there. And then I, um, I went back abroad, actually, because I wasn't having too much luck. Um, and then it was at that point that somebody said to me, a professional said to me, he said, because um, I was saying I want to be a TV presenter. And this guy, Tom Kerr was his name, from uh, Canada, professional director. He directed uh, Keith Sutherland and all those people in those old movies. He said to me, he said, Brian, do, do you know what? He goes, you, you've got, you have got natural talent. You have got natural talent. But he said, you need to train. You need to know what you're doing in front of that camera. And at the moment, you don't. So why do you expect somebody to invest their time and effort to develop you when you haven't done it yourself? And you know what? He was right. I, I, I really did need to. So I, I actually went and started training in various places. And after that, um, I had quite a lot of success. So just put this collage of pictures up. Oh, did I mention I've written a book about this? Did I mention that? Have I ever mentioned that before? I don't know. I've written that book. It's on Amazon now. If you go to Amazon, put in Brian Naylor, my book comes up. Presenting for TV and screen. There it is. That came out last year. But not only that, that's me working on the BBC with Gonth on a, on a show there. I've been presenting and all sorts. These are some of the earlier ones. This one is uh, doing a wine channel. This is doing a shopping channel. That's me with Charlie Brooker. All sorts of live stuff all around the world. And I remember once when I was doing the Wine Channel being over in Australia, they threw me out, uh, threw me out, flew me out to Australia. Uh, I was in a hot air balloon over the Yarra Valley and I was filming a piece to camera and thinking I'm getting paid for this. What a brilliant, brilliant job. It really can be. Um, and um, again, I was full time with that job and it was paying really quite nicely. So that's who I am. I've been training people now, um, well, for, for, 20 years at least. I've had the biggest TV presenter training company in the world. That was over at Pinewood Studios. And I've been training uh, CEOs and all sorts of people. So I'm going to be able to pass some of that knowledge on to you. Because as I said, I have made all the mistakes that there are to make. I really have. So let's have a look at this. These are some of the people that I have worked with and that I have trained and have gone on to do quite well. So not only have we got like uh, Jodie Gibson there, you might recognise her from this morning. I've worked with Jodie. She came down to Henley on Thames, did a private day with me. We've got Jay Shetty. There's Suki Waterhouse. She um, was with Bradley Cooper for a little while. Who else we got? That's uh, Tamara Eccleson. She's doing quite well. Charlie Brooker. This is uh, Annabelle Knight on this morning as well. Karina Goes Wild. She had her own show on Sky TV. And then some of the people that you haven't probably heard of, but have made a living 
of being a presenter. So we've got Raquel Akufa there. She's the Washington correspondent. She works over in Washington. We've got Juliano there. He does the postcode lottery. So there's loads and loads of other people on shopping channels. There's Alex there doing a shopping channel that are making a living, but they're not necessarily famous, but you don't have to be famous. If, if you're here because you want to be famous, then there's easier ways. I mean, literally. If you want to be famous, that's not what this is about. If you want to be able to do a job really well and communicate effectively through the camera and just, just be the best presenter you can be, then there are ways you can go about doing that. All of these people and all of the people that I've mentioned, and I've literally trained thousands of people, have all come through the doors at the Presenter Academy. It used to be called the TV Training Academy. And this is what they paid for that training, for that knowledge, for that advice. Three-day presenting course, 1299 The diploma course, four weeks. Still up online if you want to buy it. Go, in, go ahead. £2,495. And then a one-to-one -one with myself on a daily basis, 1750 That is what people have in the past paid. So I've put the entire course online and you can get that same training now. It's available on my new website. To get all that training and knowledge, everything that we've been talking about is covered. So this is what it kind of looks like when you're inside. All the areas are down, uh, where are we? Here are the categories, so you've got the intro. Um, the on-screen communication, that's all covered. The tools of the trade, the making content, self-filming, and the career strategy, that is the online course. Each module then has videos, it has written descriptions, and it has illustrated, there's audio content, and then there's multiple choice questions, and there are assignments, if you like, at the end. So I suggest to you, right, take an iPhone and do this, or take your laptop and read this script, downloaded scripts for you for auto cue as well. It's all there on that package. Also, I have included that VIP club membership in this as well. So that's $9.99 a month. I'm going to include that. Also, there are ways you can say things to be more persuasive, more influential, more charismatic. And it's really interesting. Now, I always say that this is a tool for you to use and use it ethically like you would a knife. OK, like you would your car. Use it properly. Use it ethically to help you become a better communicator, a better explainer, how to get your messages across more effectively. If you use it wrongly because you're trying to manipulate people, well, then I would rather you don't buy it. OK, and, and I, but I'm sure it's not you because you wouldn't need that to be nasty to somebody. You could use another tool uh, far easier. But it is a really powerful tool, the psychology behind communication. Um, and, uh, and I'm throwing in that ebook for you as well. You also get access in that VIP members area to all the past webinars that we've done. So those people, I know some of you have, have come to some of the webinars before, but we've had agents, we've had BAFTA winning directors, we've had um, color specialists, we've had all sorts of people. So get it now, it's a special webinar offer. It's gonna be around for a limited time, possibly a week, I don't know. But if you wanna go forward, if you want all those bits, grab your copy now.